G'day Australia, I'm Coram E, and today I'm at Audiocom Mobile Electronics in Balkana, where I want to show you a trick that might get you out of a jam. We're working on a Land Rover here, and uh, what we've done is we've put a plug and play doubled in Apple CarPlay head unit into the vehicle. Now, before we get it all mounted up, because we're sensible, we're gonna do a power up test and make sure everything's working okay. What we've discovered during the process of this power up test is in fact that there's a little bit of a data mismatch with this clever little module. This is a Air Pro module and uh, it comes with uh, some plug and play harnesses so that we can plug into the factory harness here and that that will link through to the ISO adapter which plugs into the back of the head unit for a plug and play installation. Now that all linked up fine, however, because there is uh, a lot of data platforms so, and it's not unfortunately a perfect world, sometimes the data that this reads from the car side isn't quite right to trigger the head unit and get it to switch on and off with the key. Because, uh, this vehicle and a lot of late model and a lot of European vehicles don't have a traditional switch on off accessories. It's a data feed that comes from the body control module of the car to tell the head unit via a data pulse to turn on and off. Now because that factory head unit is out of the loop, uh, we need to substitute that. Now the module does it 99% of the time, but every now and then there's a little data mismatch and we have to create an artificial accessories feed for the head unit, and that's what I'm gonna show you here today. So, we've run a little extra wire, and then we've connected it here to the accessories feed that's going to the aftermarket head unit, bypassing the accessories feed that should come out of this, but unfortunately isn't today. Now this is all pretty easy. You just uh, snip the accessories wire that's going to the head unit, and make your own wire extension. And where we're gonna pick up and artificial accessories is from the fuse panel. It's the safest place to do it. it, means we don't have to modify the vehicle's wiring at all. And that's also pretty straightforward. So let's go down here to the fuse panel. So just under the glove box in this vehicle is the fuse panel. You're gonna get yourself a trusty test light. You want an LED test light, not a globe test light. An LED test light is safer and protects against back feeds. So you're unlikely to ever get yourself in a situation where you get a warning light on the dash from poking around with your test light, which can happen if you use a globe test light. So get an LED test light. You can get them from our website, audiocom.online, or you can get them from places like JCAR, Ultronics, uh, everywhere online. There's a lot of different places. You can pick those up from LED test light is what you need. Now, you're gonna fish around on your factory fuse panel until you find a fuse that turns comes on and off with the in this either the key or in this car it's a push button so when the button's pushed the uh, you want the power to switch on when the button's pushed again and you exit the vehicle you want the power to switch off now once you've found a few there was five or six that fit that description in this particular car you can't just go poking around and pulling any old fuse from the car. So after you've found a few, you want to reference the fuse map in the vehicle and pick one of those fuses that did what we want it to do. You're going to pick one that doesn't have anything to do with things like ABS, airbags, engine control. You want to pick something like the wipe, washer wiper circuit or maybe heated seats or something non-essential in the vehicle just as a safety precaution and again to try and not interfere with the vehicle at all and create any error codes so um, pick yourself a fuse in this one we went with the rear washer uh, motor uh, the, sorry the rear wiper is the fuse that we ended up choosing that comes on and off with when the start button is pressed on the car but it's a non-essential piece of equipment in the vehicle so we can't interfere with anything important like ABS or airbags now the way we tapped into that is with this very smart little adapter called a fuse tap. So what happens is you pull out the original fuse, uh, two new fuses go into this little fuse tap so the circuit is still fused and then this goes back into that same fuse position. That will give us this switched accessories feed output that goes up to the head unit and still retain the original 10 amp fuse on that circuit that was originally intended by the manufacturer. So we're just gonna clip that in there now. Uh, this is tricky from this angle. There we go. That's all in position. It doesn't interfere with the factory fuses at all. 
very nice and neat and we haven't had to chop into the vehicle and modify it in any way that's going to be detrimental to the vehicle's integrity now we have a switched accessories so if we uh, press the vehicle on the head unit which has still got the protective plate come on it starts powering up and uh, now we have a full and complete plug and play system what we found with this after we created the artificial accessories is that the module is still doing all the correct data for the steering wheel control interface. Uh, so the data was almost perfect, it just had a slight data mismatch for the switched accessories only. So we're able to solve that with the artificial accessories. I have had this over the past 20 years, dozens and dozens of times where the steering wheel control module does do most of the data, sorts out all the steering wheel control interface, but it just doesn't have the switched accessories. I'm not sure why the data mismatch is there. We did try an update on this module, which is available from the manufacturer's website, but it, for some reason there was a little mismatch with this vehicle. But it's an easy solve by running yourself and creating yourself an artificial accessories feed for the head unit, which has solved all our problems. Now we can finish off this installation get it all mounted up and send this happy customer on their way. Thank you for watching. I hope this helps you out with a solution uh, or gets you out of trouble one day. And make sure you hit that subscribe button because we want to see you again soon so we can pass on more tips and tricks to help you out. Have a good one.